Hello there, True Seekers. This is your Royal Boy Ben back again with your regular dose of Royal News and Analysis. Today, we've got more thermonuclear tea to scald all your Royal Watchers out there. Today's piping hot topic revolves around the ever embattled Prince Harry and Meghan's recent little Nigerian adventure. More specifically, concerns from prominent Royal experts that this overseas charity jaunt may have been part of a more nefarious ploy by the Duke and Duchess of Delusion to actually usurp King Charles's reign. So, I know you guys are super excited to hear more about this, but before we jump into any further details, I'd like to say a massive thank you for your love and support, and if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, guys, what are you waiting for? Hit the subscribe button now, and don't forget to press the bell icon. Let's get started. So, I know it sounds pretty much unhinged right off the bat, but coming from a long-time voice of reason like veteran role bio-author Angela Levin, perhaps we should take her coup de tart suspicions a bit more seriously than just another unhinged internet conspiracy theory. According to Levin, Harry's own comments about the Nigerian trip being all about meeting people directly to enact solutions of positive change are basically disguised shots across the bow at the firm, because apparently, per the expert's analysis, the that sort of Prince activist language tactically reveals his and Meghan's insidious long game, fully supplanting the entire work in royal family duties and role in the Commonwealth on a permanent basis. Levin, of course, didn't mince words, flatly accusing the globetrotter pair of wanting to take over from the king and the family at a time when Chuck is too indisposed with the health issues to make overseas visits himself. She claimed the whole point of Harry and Meghan's Archiewell NGO tour was really just the opening salvo for their quiet campaign to rebrand themselves as an entire affordable full-service royal family alternative for which nations will bite. I mean, that's certainly one hell of a theory to flow, Angie. Even by the lofty bar of anti megan has conspiracies that get lobbed onto the online bonfire every day, accusing the entire Nigerian event of being some kind of soft power coup teaser. Real feels like a spicy meatball even for jaded palates like mine. Yes, 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 of course. Then again, what better way for the insecure spotlight-addicted prince to recapture his lost sense of purpose and prestige than by trying to incriminately wedge himself into the actual diplomatic duties of the crown itself, rather than just glumly accept irrelevance in Meghan's Montecito shadow realm? Maybe Harry really is tempted to start playing at being a one-man better idea roving ambassador to the Commonwealth. We already know the dude's hopelessly thirsty for any fleeting whiff of the royal gravitas he once took for granted growing up. What kind of messiah complex might he develop if some smaller nations start taking his diplomatic mercy tours in semi-serious fashion? From there, it's not hard to envision a scenario where Harry gets it into his head that he alone is best positioned to gradually assume the monarch's traditional overseas roles. Or at least it seems to be that fear Levin and some protectionist royal voices are telegraphing. Indeed, I could see how the threat vector of gradual royal obsolence might trigger some institutional panic. Old school palace pursuits, after all, imagine if Harry and Meghan did somehow successfully seed the notion across the Commonwealth. A hereditary system by way of feckless celebrity influencer humanitarianism and anarchic truth bombs rather than, well, actual dignified noblesse oblige. I'm kidding, but only barely. If there's even a single track for King Charles or Royal experts like Levin to feel anxious over down the road, it's in the precedent. It could set the hereditary monarchy somehow too antiquated and out of touch for the evolving 21st century taste and more. And the soapboxing ultra-online stateless duo of Harry and Meghan sadly make far more plausible avatars for monarch-lite republicanism than most of us care to admit, which is why I can see the value in Levin pushing hard against the very notion of this Nigerian charity circuit being anything other than solidly self-contained and charitable in nature to even broach a subject. Harry and Meghan making clandestine inroads in taking over from the king. For all this, Haz and Mucker are coming to stage quite the coup, mean potential to gain frenzied momentum. If the Sussex is every humanitarian junket is allowed to get spun in the public imagination, as surreptitious dry runs for bilateral head of state negotiations soon enough, the press and social punditry will render the formidable usurpers by mere oblique insinuation. That said, what makes Levin's annoyance with Harry and Meghan's Nigerian virtue signaling ring true is, of course, her consternation over the fundamental discontent at the heart of their perpetual celebrity clout chase. It's a weird brand of inaccessible elitism. 
and self-importance to be selling from such a rarefied private jetting perch. Perhaps that's the root of anxiety Levin is trying to warn about. Harry and Meghan's smug approach that simply cannot exist without tactically presenting themselves as more rational, capable sovereigns for the 21st century future, building up a cult of social media fueled personalities to inevitably counteract or offset the crown, whether they realise it or not. Now, iffy as her blown-up coup hypothesis seems, the seasoned royal author clearly detected the simmering anti-institutional arrogance laced throughout the Harkle's Nigerian grandstanding in a less hyperbolic way, and Levin's not necessarily incorrect to intuit the self-serving aggrandizement. At some point, their perpetually performative brand of entitled progressive absolution has to start buckling up harder against the more hierarchical systems of culture power built on tradition and lineage. That's just a natural escalation cycle for these sorts of celebrity rabble-rousers, fueled primarily by self-validation. But could that well-worn dynamic plausibility escalate to outright usurpation attempts against the palace itself on however small a geopolitical scale? I would like to think Levin is overselling the potential for mutiny by a father-son duo who continue struggling just to nail their redemption arcs, never mind successful revolutions. Now, then again, history does love making farcical jesters out of any grandiose narcissists who lose perspective on the boundaries of their own ego's fleeting momentum. So perhaps the rest of us would be just as foolish to dismiss any possibilities of Harry falling victim to such pathological delusions of historical self-importance. So, guys, wow, I hope that you enjoyed this and that you are now ready for even more videos because, as always, we've got more coming. But what did you think about today's news, guys? We want to hear what you think in the comments. And if you want more content like this, of course, do not threat, guys. Do not worry because I will be back soon with more oof, scalding hot royalty and gossip for you royal lovers out there. So, before closing in, guys, of course, you know the drill around here. We simply ask if you could like and subscribe if you already have not done so. And please press the all-important bell icon to get notified of our next videos. We can't wait to see you in the next one. We just want to say a big thank you for all your love and support. You guys really do keep us going here at the channel. So, until next time, guys, this is bye for now. And we'll see you again for more royal news and analysis. Goodbye for now.